fire service has used centrifugal pumps since about the 30s. One of the reasons they went to them was the fact that they take advantage of incoming pressure. If you want to operate a pump at 150 PSI and you have a hydrant feeding you 75 pounds of pressure, you only have to operate the pump to produce another 75 pounds of pressure to operate 150. The centrifugal impeller takes advantage of incoming pressure. We make two, three, and four stage pumps. The CM pump behind me is a two stage pump, it has two impellers, a first stage impeller and a second stage impeller. It can be operated in either volume or the pressure position. We make a three stage pump by extending the impeller shaft out the front of the outboard bearing, put another impeller and body out there, creating a three stage. So the water would run from the first stage to the second stage to the third stage, adding pressure through each impeller that it went through. The New York City high-rise pumper is a perfect example of a three-stage pump. They use our CMU pump, two-stage, with an extended impeller shaft, utilizing a 750 GPM pump on that. Uh, they can actually produce 500 gallons a minute at 700 PSI for charging standpipes. Uh, we make a four-stage pump, it's a CP4. It's 90 gallons a minute at 1,350 PSI. Each impeller will add pressure as the water goes through each impeller to produce the 1,350 PSI. Let's move over to the cutaway CMU to talk about how a two-stage pump works in the volume and pressure position. We have two impellers, as I said, inside the pump body. So you have the first stage impeller towards the back, the second stage impeller towards the front, towards the outboard side. Okay. So the impeller shaft is coming in, you have both impellers turning on the same impeller shaft, rotating the same direction. On the intake side, you have what are called flap valves on either side. Okay, so those are right here on the intake fit. Water comes in, splits apart, it's gonna go into impellers at the same time. So let's say in the volume position, we're gonna operate this pump at 1,000 gallons a minute at 100 PSI. We're gonna turn the impeller shaft so each impeller will produce 100 PSI and each one will flow 500 gallons a minute for a combined 1,000 GPM at 100 PSI on the discharge side of the pump. So the water comes in through the side intake. It splits apart. It's gonna go into the first stage impeller. Again, that impeller is spinning fast enough to produce 100 PSI, 500 gallons a minute. That water comes out of that impeller, past the stripping edge. It's cut down, going through what's called the transfer valve. The transfer valve is a ball-style transfer valve. It's a bronze ball. This is a patent designed by Waterus, and we are the only ones that use this style of valve. Patented in 1977. But the unique thing about this valve is the fact that when it's transferring between volume and pressure, the only part of this ball that touches the actual housing inside the pump is just this surface. We have a wave spring and an O-ring behind it, so as it's transferring over, if it gets sand and that type of thing in here as it tries to transfer over between volume and pressure, the seal just pushes back against the ball, overcomes it, and switches over into the proper position. The testing, they pumped a pound and a half of sand per gallon of water through this valve and it did not jam up. But this will transfer between volume and pressure. Okay. So right now in volume, we're taking that 500 GPM at 100 PSI, pushing it over into the discharge manifold, the front side of the pump. We're taking 500 gallons a minute at 100 PSI off the second stage impeller and pushing that into the discharge side of the pump where they combine for their flow. So 1,000 gallons a minute at 100 PSI. Right, the volume or parallel. Water comes in together, splits apart, comes back together. Right, so we're gonna switch into pressure. What we're gonna do is change the transfer valve. So the water no longer is allowed to go to the discharge side. We're gonna switch it so it goes over into the second stage I area. All right. So 500 gallons a minute, 100 PSI, down through this valve, you can watch it as it turns. That water is gonna go into the second stage at 500 gallons at 100 PSI, but before it can go into the impeller, and pick up the pressure that that impeller can produce, it has to shut the flap valves. The flap valves were pushed open by the water coming in from the intake of the pump into the second stage in volume. Now in pressure, you've got 100 PSI water pressure coming through your transfer valve. 
it will shut that flap valve. It'll seal down like that, which does not allow the water to go back into the first stage side of the pump. So that's gonna force that 500 gallons a minute into the second stage impeller, where it will pick up the 100 PSI that that impeller can produce. Now you've got 500 gallons a minute at 200 PSI on the discharge side of the pump. We cut our capacity in half, but doubled our pressure. Okay? That's a theory of a centrifugal pump multiple stage. The single stage pump uses just one impeller. It's the same basic design as far as the pump body. You've got an intake fitting coming in, the water splits apart, and it's gonna go to the eyes of a dual suction eye impeller in the middle of the pump body, turned by the same style of impeller shaft. But that doesn't have a transfer valve and it doesn't have flap valves. So you get whatever pressure you can create by RPMs, how fast you can turn the impeller. So the water comes off of one side, past the stripping edge to the discharge side of the pump, off the second side to the discharge side of the pump. So a very simple pump. Right? This is a dual suction eye impeller. Water comes in on either side. Feeds either a split shroud exit way or a common exit way uh, to flow high volumes of water through a relatively small impeller.